Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Robert Kelly, a.k.a. the dude, a.k.a. the king of Zoom. Thanks for checking out the Calter and Kelly YouTube page. We hope you like what we're putting up there. Make sure you go to patreon.com slash Robert Kelly and sign up over there because every week we put a show, an extra show, Friday show, only Patreon. And we also have the J.O. party on Saturday night, only Patreon. That means you, all the fans, get to come into a Zoom and hang out with us and all the other ladybugs. And uh, it's it's a blast. So we also let you watch all the shows live. YKWD live. All the Calter and Kelly's live. Unedited. All go on the Patreon. And you also get the 10-minute extra YKWD every week goes on there, along with Live from the Shed, one-on-ones, Tech Talk with Bobby and Friends. There's so much content up there. And you know what? It's all for what? A price of a cup of coffee. Five bucks gets you in the door. And uh, you're going to love it. So make sure you go over there, patreon.com slash Robert Kelly. And here's another little thing I want you to do. If you like this content we're putting up, subscribe and like. That's it. Just hit the little button, subscribe, so you know when we got a new show out. And then like it, so we know you like what we're doing, okay? That's it. Patreon.com slash Robert Kelly. Subscribe and like. Now, enjoy the show. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, I'm very excited. we got a new sponsor, and uh, this one... I just, I just love it when it incorporates into what I like, which is shopping online. We all shop online and we've all seen the promo code field taunt us at the checkout. You know, oh my God, if I just had the code. Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Like that, bam. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and it stalls in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Get Honey free at joinhoney.com slash YKWD. That's joinhoney.com slash YKWD. Are you ready to downsize? At Tiny Homes of Maine, our team works together to design and construct any custom mobile space unique to you, all while working within your budget. Contact us today at tinyhomesofmaine.com. We're committed to you. Yeah, baby. We're starting the podcast right now. We're back. You know what, dude? Live. Welcome, everybody, to the show. YKWD. I started the social media and podcast. <laughs> back. The YKWD podcast. YKWD is back again. Old school. Back in the day. Where it all started. Before them all. YKWD podcast is so fun and crazy. It has no rules. Shut up. You're ruining this. Where's the bandana, man? Sorry, it's a comedy podcast. This isn't NPR. That's what this podcast does. Is there any better show? This is the original. Original. You know what, dude? Welcome back to another episode. Of you know what, dude? You know what, dude? Hey. I should do it with an English accent. Hello, I'm Bobby, and you know what, dude's back for another week, and we got fantastic guests on tonight. This <laughs> evening, I sure I'm going to take a couple shots, but it's going to be well worth it for my fucking fans, the ladybugs. So let's give it up first for my dubious friend Jim Norton. Hello, Jim. You should call it. Uh, you know what, lad. If you're gonna if you're gonna do it with that you know, accent, yeah. you know what, lad. You know what, you know what lad. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, know what, what lad. Cunt. <laughs> you know what. Speaking cunt. of <laughs> and speaking of cunts, let's introduce my next guest, Rich Fucking Voss, the cunt. <laughs> There's no need for that, and there no. shouldn't be any hostility throughout this show because. <laughs> There's, there's no re- doesn't Norton look like silly putty? Look, <laughs> you want to stick him on the comics? <laughs> See, well, it wouldn't be anybody in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I getting it? I didn't fucking <laughs> say he pluralized it. What was I gonna do? Just attack him? <laughs> well, just don't fucking lump me in with him just because you look like silly putty. <laughs> you look like one of those cushions on the couch behind you. <laughs> Did you see how quick Norton came back? It was amazing. Without even oh. without even blinking an eye like he's in an audition. He 
Listen, this can we stop, Foss? This is what you're coming in hot like you always do. Yeah. Can we stop, Foss? Sure, just hold up a book. <laughs> well, get one between Bobby and Mush. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking buh <-oh. laughs> right. How come I can't look in full screen, by the way, in this fucking ludicrous program? Yeah. You fuck. <laughs> How? Push the button, you fucking. Where's I the... love that Norton because Norton doesn't have to use something. It's shit. Yeah. It's right. better. Uh, on the bottom right corner of the screen. The bottom right full screen. Bottom yeah. right. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, God. Oh, I see it. <laughs> Couldn't see it without. <laughs> There you go. My eyes are going. Um, so anyways, uh, I wanted to have you guys on. Good. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you came on, Jim. Voss is always on. I'm glad you came up. I love you, Voss. And Gabby, uh, welcome to the show. And Mush is in his car right now in a parking lot in a snowstorm in San Antonio. Don't ask. Oh. Um, it's just Houston. Like, you know, they're just crippled <laughs> if they get more than one inch of snow. It's fucking, you know, yeah. It's crazy that it's, and so many people go down there. Hey, I'm going to go to Texas and play golf or do whatever in the warm weather. Ha ha. Fuck them. That's what I'm saying. You know, because we're stuck up here in the cold. I've and never heard of anybody saying they're going to Texas to play golf. I'm sure they do, but I've always heard Florida. I'm going to Palm yeah. Beach. I've never heard anyone say I'm going to shoot down to Dallas. Yeah, to no, play golf. yeah, yeah. The only they go to Texas to shoot people, not play yeah. golf. Or. I don't know. A lot of them move down there to help their careers, but uh, the thing is, a lot of people do go to Texas to play. Can golf. we just can we just get it out, boss? You're mad that everybody's moving to Austin because Joe oh, Rogan, yeah. Joe Rogan sent out the call <laughs> to all the funny comics, and you didn't hear it. Yep, move no, to I, Austin, I, and you got everybody moving. The Giannis, Tim, Tony Hinchcliffe, uh, everybody are they all going moved. down there. They're all moving to Austin. Rogan yeah, is down really there, good. and they're gonna fucking take over that town. And okay. Foster, are you making noise? What is that noise? No, that's not me. I guarantee that was is Mush. It? That was Mush eating a fucking chicken sandwich from Popeyes. No, it's scratchy. <laughs> the sound. Anyways, um, it's coming out of your mic. What is that noise? It's somebody typing. Who's typing? It's Rich. It's, it's I guess not, I, it's I, I, Voss has typing mic. posture. He, he's got that fucking <laughs> no, that, that's typing no. posture. First of all, first of all, Mush, is that you? Mush. Mush. <laughs> Mush. <laughs> oh, no, his boss is on his phone mic. So that's where the clicking noise is coming from. Who's talking well, about that? That's the only mic I can use on my phone. You have a fuck. It's a year into a fucking pandemic. Yes. And you have a computer with a microphone, a professional microphone. That's right. I've seen you computer. use it. And you yeah, fucking yeah. always use your stupid phone. No, that, that's where you're wrong. First of all, you told me to use my phone because it comes in better. Second of all, the computer doesn't pick up a uh, boneyard or whatever fuck you're using. Boneyard. <laughs> Uh, you, you told me to use the phone last time. I'll take the phone upstairs. It'll probably be, but it's not scratching. If it happens again, I'll take it upstairs where the service is better. I don't but like I, your hands directly in camera. Your, your <laughs> finger in, is, is offensive. <laughs> it's offensive <laughs> to all little people yeah. all over the world. It's like, it's like Hervé Village has his corpse. That's what Voss's <laughs> finger looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and they have the same hat. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying the same gun. <laughs> Bobby, they have, the same, they have the same career. <laughs> Bobby, you went bathing uh, suit shopping today. Were you successful? You know what? This is fucking out of line that you're bringing this up because <laughs> no, I brought this up. I brought this up, Jim. Here, this is why Voss is such a piece of shit. He's just know. Jersey trash. Mm -hmm. I brought this up to him today because I was very fucked up that I tried on all my bathing suits <laughs> from last year. <laughs> <laughs> you tried them on in front of your carnival mirror? Get out of here. <laughs> why? <laughs> suits. You can find one easily. Don't ask her. Don't give real advice after a joke bomb. <laughs> yeah, I don't like. <laughs> don't, don't don't let a joke bomb and then give real. But all kidding aside, they are for sale everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what do you like in a bathing suit? Do you know, I like the ones with pockets. <laughs> that's boss. Yeah, that's boss. You should use that as a promo for Uncle Vinny's. <laughs> I I had to go. Thank you, Mush. I had to go to um I had to go to DXL. Which, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. I had to go to <laughs> DXL today and get new bathing because my wife she always does this to me. She puts out clothes that she knows don't fucking fit anymore. And she'd be like, you need to try those on. I need to try them on. So I'll feel like shit because they don't <laughs> fit and I'll get angry and sad and suicidal and I get mad. And then you're going to go, just go to DXL and get some new stuff. What's Why DXL? don't I just go get fucking new clothes? DXL is fat guy store or store. keep DX, keep your shit. And make yourself lose weight to get into that. I try not to buy bigger clothes because I put weight on too, but I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to feel like a pile of shit until right. I drop enough to wear this. Jim, I'm leaving Thursday. The only way it would fit is if I got a knife. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh well, that's right. You're going to Aruba. I'm going to Aruba Thursday. It's not whatever willpower I have, unless I did heroin for the next three days, it's not going <laughs> to fucking fit. Yeah. Uh, how no. far how how far off was it from fitting? Was it a little snug or like no? This is not until August. This one doesn't go back on until if, August. If if I dropped a hundred, I'd have to leave it. Oh, uh, I know yeah. I, some of my pants since the pandemic uh, don't. It, it's you know what are you going to do? You know you're not as active now. That's the problem. You know. So. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not that at all. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate serious boss. I do Listen, too. Supply and why of boss like is cringy. Why, what is this angle? It's a why screensaver. You, why are you like over here? Can you just <laughs> go in the middle? It's fucking a year into a pandemic and yeah. you still don't know how to do this. Exactly. Yeah. Act like you're on the road and just go in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How did you not fix it? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. You know, I actually, I'll tell you, I was watching the, the Patrice O'Neill documentaries coming out the 19th Yes, this week. Um, do not watch the first airing on Comedy Central. I was told to tell people, do not watch the first airing. It is a edited version. It's not the version that Mike Bonfiglio and Billy Burr and all those created because they can't cut into the office. So they have to uh, edit it down, watch the digital version on the digital platform or watch any other airing of the documentary, which will be the full uh, 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 doc that they met it made. So how long is it? The full doc? They uh, air the full doc on Comedy Central. Is that never or just not? No, every did I just every <laughs> every airing after the first one will be the full one. That first night, they can't cut into the office. Because of money and whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, watching the doc, it really fucking scared the shit out of me. Because I, I you know, last year I really put, I really put an effort into losing weight. Uh, I lost uh, almost fifty pounds. Wow. I went from three thirty six down to two eighty nine. I was working out, and doing great, and then I fucking took this addiction for granted again, and. You know, Thanksgiving rolled around and I wound up eating and then I wound up eating again. And then by now, I'm, I don't even, I, I'm so afraid to step on a fucking Are scale. you back to where you were or no? I, I don't know, Jim. Wait, I don't even want to look. I don't just, even want to look, but I feel like I am. But then when I watch this documentary, I'm like, one of my friends is dead. The other one had a stroke. The other one had a heart attack. Uh, the other right. one's fucking, you know, 60 fucking three, you know. And has anxiety and chest pains. The other one, you know, is he never going to die. Good he's, he's a really <laughs> good, just physically looks like he's dying. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you say 336? Yeah. All right, hold on. Are you playing Are you those numbers? Are <laughs> you doing the numbers of my weight? <laughs> <laughs> if you win, I want half. <laughs> no. You know, but when you lost 50 pounds, how long did it take you to lose 50 pounds? About four months, right? That's all, yeah, right? Four or five months, yeah. Yeah, so after you get back from Aruba, have a good time in Aruba, and then just No, get, no. You don't no, need to have a good no. time in Aruba. 
I don't, I'm not having a good time in Aruba. I'm not having a good time. I, it started today. I watched that documentary and it, I, I couldn't, I had to keep stopping it. I had to keep stopping it. There's so many moments in that dark. There's a couple of things I never knew. And I actually talked to Patrice's mom today for a while. God, do I love talking to her. Yeah. Um, she makes me laugh so much. Um, and she, you know, I asked her a couple of the things. I was like, is that real? Did that happen? And she's like, I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah, it happened. So these, you know, everything in the documentary is legit and real. It wasn't created for some storyline. Cause there was a, there was a one moment in particular that I fucking, I had a, I just was blubbering and you know, to, you know, he, he knew, you know, he knew it. Yeah. I don't know if I saw the moment you're talking about. I, I, I watched the first few minutes and then I perused it a little bit. I haven't sat down and watched the whole thing. I watched pieces of the whole thing. Yeah, I haven't actually sat down and watched the whole thing. You know, Bobby saying he knew it kind of is like saying, well, you know, a drug addict's saying, oh, I know there's not a good ending to this. You know what I mean? Uh, you say that about your set. It's what, uh, <laughs> it's what, uh, <laughs> I, I wish Norton was here so we could fix the lighting in my room. So, when, you know, but knowing what? it and being in denial, knowing it and being in denial and, and rationalizing, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's, it's a whole different thing, you know. Uh, it, it was, yeah, I know, but see, it's just, you know, it's just a scary thing that he tried. And for the last couple of years of his life, he really tried. He really tried. He well, put he, the effort in. He was a vegan for what? Three years. Three years. He was a. Oh, vegan. is it three years? Vegetarian. Jesus. Vegetarian, not a vegan. Vegetarian. Yeah. Uh, well, even still, I mean, to to cut out, you know. But you could be a vegetarian and eat cake and pie. But if you're a vegan, you're not eating cake and pie, and he was a vegan for two years, maybe a vegetarian for another year. Or so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, whatever. Crazy. Anyways, I don't want to talk about all that sad shit. I want to talk about, I mean, it just brought up so many fucking stories when with we were, him. When, when we were at the funeral, Keith does it really well. When we were at the funeral. Why? Can, can I stop for a second? Oh, you like this. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't know there was. A certain topic. I thought we were just talking about Patrice. No, you. I, it's not. Has not. I'm, I'm so excited about what you're going to say. It's oh. the fact that you fucking put your camera back <laughs> over here. Oh, oh, sorry. You're a technical moron. Yeah. 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 And you're still there. Why can't you put <laughs> it in the middle? I mean, just why? Well, you know what? If you're watching this, just go over to the opposite side of me so it looks like I'm in the middle. <laughs> the, amazing, the irony of a light switch when you know there's not going to be any bright ideas. <laughs> what? Uh, what, is that little rope behind you? Can you hang yourself with it? <laughs> At least one of us can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And, uh, and we're standing uh, after the funeral in, I guess, in the back in the hallway. I think it was yeah. Will Keith. Uh, you might have been there. And 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 Rock is sitting here going, "You got to eat your vegetables." Like we're fucking all like half fucking crying and depressed. And, and, and Chris is standing by the coffin giving health oh. tips. I know. <laughs> fucking Keith doesn't. Oh. It, it's so funny. Got to eat your vegetables. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you remember uh, the time? Do you remember the time um, when we did the um, the O and A virus tour? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember how fucking terrified you were when you got to the thing and the show started? And as people started getting out, were you? I was. I maybe you weren't, Jim. I was fucking terrified. Oh, Every yeah. show. Yes. Because of the lineup. And I always had to go up after Patrice, which made me sick to my stomach. <laughs> and I mean, it's like they loved Patrice. All the fan base, the ONA fan base loved Patrice. They fucking loved him. I mean, they embraced him and they shouldn't have. I mean, you think about it, it's a bunch of, mainly a bunch of, 
rock and roll white dudes, but that he was so funny. They love comedy so much that they were like, fucking he's the best. And they embraced him and he would go up and murder. And I would just be shitting my pants backstage. It, that had to be crazy to follow. I mean, you have to close, you've closed those uh, comics come home too, but following Patrice had to be the most nerve wracking thing on that tour. That sure, because you never knew when you were going to go on. It was like within a two hour period. <laughs> <laughs> Why he would always, he, uh, he was the worst too. Yeah, uh, even Norton, at the cellar. Norton closed those shows, all of them. No, yeah. no, 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 not all of them. I did, I closed the one that Bill in Philly. I closed that one, but uh, I closed and I, it. It might have been one more I closed. I didn't close it. But I know Mencia oh, actually closed one. Oh. Rogan closed one in um, the uh, fucking in Vegas. And, and I forget who else. Uh, Brewer. Did Brewer close one? No. I don't know. Probably. Yeah, I don't remember. I didn't even know Rogan did one. And I remember Vegas. Mencia because he went out. To booze and then turned it around and they and they liked him by the end of his set. That was New Jersey, yeah. That was yeah. at the Garden State Arts Center. That was really impressive because um, yeah. they that the the promoter said you have to have Carlos so he can help pull in tickets. And we liked him. I mean, this was after the whole scandal, but we still liked Carlos. And uh, yeah, he killed man. It was impressive to watch a guy who they were starting to give a hard time to. Um, starting, yeah. They I mean, booing, yeah, they yeah. Were chanting, yeah. They were chanting booing him. Did I, and then, and then uh, he fucking he gave what he would do, which was pretty fucking impressive. He would give a speech, and then get them on his side, and then go into a joke. You know, he would yeah, you you say that and give some fucking monologue that they would yeah. listen. And as soon as he got him to listen, he would tell a joke and get him to laugh. That's right. And he yeah. did that a did that a couple times. And then it kept, and then all of a sudden he fucking was killing it. So you got to well, give it up. Yeah. Did, did Dane Cook close any of those or Jay Moore? Dane was never on them. No, I mean I no. know. I know Dane was doing Dane was doing twenty thousand seaters at that time by himself. Uh, oh, yeah. I know Lewis Black and Brian Regan closed two of them. Well, I don't know. Did they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember uh, the bus. I think Brian Regan or Lewis Black had their tour bus there. Uh, we did two summers. They were so hey. much fun. Those, all of Boss, us. You got to go put your, you got to go get your, on your headphones. You got to uh, go get your computer. It, Sign it, out and sign back in. Terrible. That clicking is fucking killing everything. This is going to be a great podcast, but it's your clicking is kicking. Yeah, sign like, out and come back in. Well, sounds like your turtle good. feet walking. <laughs> yeah. me, me and Norton will carry the show till you come back. Don't walk us upstairs. Sign out and upstairs. sign back in. I'm going to go upstairs and see if I can do this on my computer. Oh, no. can you just Ooh. do it on your computer? Ooh. And have you ever wanted to see, see a camera it? go backwards so badly? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the fact that he's making us go through this real time it's kills crazy. me. Yeah, it's crazy. I just know. hang up. And I'm hanging up a car pack. Hold on. He's afraid just that hang you want up. Hang up. Yeah, yeah, hang yeah. up and just <laughs> sign back on on your computer. Well, you don't hear the clicking now. That's why I'm we hear sure. it now. <laughs> we still hear it. It's awful. It sounds like your little fingers on a keyboard. Yeah. Oh. Sounds like a velociraptor is typing. We hate it. Are you putting on your headphones that aren't plugged into the phone that you're on? They go on my computer. He wants okay. to make a seamless switch because he's afraid that people won't answer for him when he calls back. Of course we're going to answer. Why would we not answer? We I mean, well, I mean, please, how many reasons do you need? Why would we not? <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you have any Patrice stories that you you remember that a uh, I don't think there's any favorite. Any, you know, most of them are hooker stories. Um, or, or, right. or you got hookers it. with him with Patrice? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of she, course. In Brazil, uh, watching him, uh, watching him make that girl have an orgasm and squirt. Uh, oh God, I was holding her hands. Yeah, well, I, and she was like laughing, and, and then and, and she came. She gosh, I was in awe of him when he pulled that off. I was in awe. Dude, she I was holding her hands because she was like, please hold my hands. Cause she wanted she wanted something while well, she had an orgasm to squeeze. Yeah. And she dug her fingers into my hand and I, I was like, I have AIDS. <laughs> I'm I have I have AIDS. I just got a hooker fingernail into my the thing she jerks guys off with 
is in the her blood is in my finger now. I'm dying of AIDS. You know, I, I might have thought I had AIDS too. I went back to one of those places that I would go to and uh I had sex with Hang on one doctor. second. Gabby, close your dumb yeah, mouth I know. while we're talking. She <laughs> <Why is her laughs> mouth open? Because she's like this. Oh. Because you you guys say insane shit. And then yeah, my your face father naturally... is a rock star of Oh huge my magnitude. my dad probably has killed hookers for all I know. <laughs> but I'm just saying that my face is gonna naturally react in shock when you say insane well, shit. Control it because it's freaking us out. Because <laughs> you look like the girl that will take away careers. <laughs> What were you saying? No, it's just uh, I had sex with a girl in a brothel twice with no condom. To oh, uh, yeah, I was a fucking uh, what do you? I was a baller uh, twice with no <laughs> yeah, fucking bag. Two days in a row. Like, I really liked her, <laughs> and I found a picture of me and like I fell in love when I was down there. I fell in love with a girl, um, and I was like, "Fuck, did, what do you mean? Marry her and move her back? You, what do you mean you fell in love? I did. I fell in love. Fabiana, her name was. I fell in love with her. I thought she was amazing." And you wanted her to be your girlfriend back here? Yeah, it wasn't realistic. Um, it wasn't realistic. <laughs> but she spoke English. A lot of girls didn't speak English. But we didn't even fuck. We just hung out. I treated it like just dead. You know, I, I had got laid a couple times down there, but most of the time it was just. And there was that little kid who began with an A. And I remember Patrice loved him. He would come around and we would give him money. Um, Arjuan, his name was with an A, I think. Um, yeah, the little he, kids, they would all come around Patrice like the fucking mayor. But the one kid, we would always give him money and he was like a sweet kid. He would just kind of hang out like outside that place we would all eat. And I remember driving away and us looking back at him as we drove away. It was like a movie, like where the kid is getting far away in the taxi cab rear view mirror. And he was really depressed about that. It was sad. Yeah, well, yeah, because the big, big chubby black guy was fucking paying his bills for a week. No, no, Patrice was sad. <laughs> I mean, Patrice, oh, was, Patrice sad. was sad. Oh, yeah, okay, Patrice yeah. uh, watching the, the kid go in the rearview mirror because he was really trying to help him. Yeah, that was well, that's that's the first time. That's one of the parts of the doc that really got me to the kid stuff. And, you know, and, and, and did you see the doc? I saw part of it. I didn't see the whole thing. I'll watch the whole thing. I watched the first few minutes. Um, but I, I didn't, I didn't want up watching the rest of it, but I will. Yeah. He was, uh, he was very far, far, look at There he is. He was very, uh, we were talking about the, uh, Patrice in Brazil. With oh the boy. Kids. I can. Oh boy. He invited me in this room and he just started laughing at me. Why? Well, too bad he didn't I, have a club. What's that? Huh. Oh, <laughs> Oh, that was uh, he had. <laughs> he must have said something good because his eyes opened up. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I got undressed or something. <laughs> you got naked what? in front of Patrice. Maybe I don't know what happened. Why? What do you mean? Why would you? Get oh my naked God! Voss was the hooker. That's <laughs> <laughs> no. Why did Why did you get naked in front of Patrice? Uh, maybe there was two two other people there. Oh, I get it now. Just say well, it. I remember Norton. He what he was doing is Patrice had a bag of dildos, you know, <laughs> and, and he would travel because he he couldn't fuck like he wanted to, and he felt bad. I believe for the girls that they weren't he wasn't banging them the way you know, so he would give them orgasms. So he he got into uh, Brookstone's foot massagers and glass dildos. Yeah. Um, and he, the glass dildo was because there was no pores or something. So it'd be uh, easier to clean, yeah. be easier to clean. And he would, he had a, he had a bag of them that he would go down. Like he'd have to do carry on with dildos. Cause he didn't want to, yeah. cause they were glass and he couldn't put them in a, in a, in a checked bag. Cause they'd smash. So he'd, he'd have a duffel bag full of dildos and he'd put them right through the fucking conveyor belt. Yep. <laughs> and the, I just remember seeing the x-ray lady's face just light up. And he would just shrug his shoulders like, eh, what are you going to do? Yeah. And I was, I, I was talking to his mother today about, um, you know, all the stuff. She took all his stuff. She has all his belongings, like everything. She went to the house and she, the furniture, the posters, everything. The, he, she has his ashes. And I asked her about the, uh, <laughs> I go, what happened to the, 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 dildos and she was like oh lord she was like i found a suitcase full of those things 
<laughs> a big metal suitcase full of vibrators and dildos. I threw them out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did she throw them out? She threw them out because, yeah, she found it was she was doing the big metal suitcase like a dildo yeah. spy, <laughs> like a dildo spy. <laughs> So when she was going in and cleaning out the stuff, she opened up a suitcase and there was just a bunch of dicks in it. <laughs> oh. Is there a way to put a picture in this room or no? Yeah, there's a way you can share down the bottom where it says yeah, share. Did, remember when we went those... Bobby, did you go the first time we went to Brazil? Were you no, there? Okay. I did not. Yeah, see, the first time we went, I only went, we would go out to these restaurants and we would have like lobster tails this big it was, I mean, besides all the sexual stuff, the places we went were unbelievable. Yep. And, and, and Norton will remember this. We used to sit outside in this cafe, me, Patrice, Norton, whoever. Helpe. Me, me, no, and Mia Pataka. Helpe was the disco. Yeah. And Mia Pataka was Mia the Pataka, cafe. Mia Pataka, that's, it, it was yeah. right in front of it, right? Yes, Mia yeah, Pataka. Right in front of you. And yep. these little kids got so attached to us. There was, yeah. you know, we used to give them money, get them something to eat. Yeah. And they were heartbroken when we were leaving. Do you remember who I'm talking about? There was That's one I just told the story. Yeah. That I was, oh. uh, it began with an A. I, 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 I began with an A something. Yeah. Arju. I, I can't remember his name. Yeah. And the tall, skinnier one out of all of them. And they used to sell peanuts out there. Uh, you know, so I don't know when. Uh, what do you look? What? We're talking about the uh, docu the documentary, Patrice. It's Bobby and Norton. Who's what? It's Gabby. It's Gabby. Nobody recognizes her. Oh. Wait, wait, Come in and say what? what? My, my wife couldn't recognize you. No, because he's not on full screen. Because okay, why? I don't know. Come here. Tell him. Tell him. The don't. <laughs> uh, that's why I don't let her in my room. Uh, <laughs> so, so I love that you switched up what we were talking about. So we were talking about hookers in in Brazil. Well, because, you switched it up. No, we're talking about the good times at the cellar. And no, and children. No, no, but I'm saying it's just the whole idea of the whole vacation, and you know, because in the day we would just sit out and have uh, uh, cappuccino or coffee. And it was just, it was a cool, the whole trip was cool, you know, to, and then there was a long flea market out there along the water, you know, so yeah. I don't, you know, it's not always, a, the whole thing wasn't just sex. Well, me and know? Keith had a big argument because I was falling, I fell in love with this girl. Like, I love this girl. It was like, I wanted to bring her back. And, and Keith was like, ah, shut up. And fucking, um, we got into a real argument. Patrice had to mediate the argument and it got into a bigger discussion of what is your fantasy? Like, you just want to come down yeah. here and fuck, but he wants to meet somebody. We had this long, you sure the argument was, was it really a girl? <laughs> no, I didn't do that on those trips. I, I was too nervous. <laughs> so that's so surprising to me that you wouldn't do that. I mean, that would be the place to do it. I mean, it that's, was, the mother, that's the motherland. I know. Of fucking, motherland. Yeah. Of, I think of, I was of, too nervous probably oh, about, uh, oh I, I didn't know the area. I was with all you guys. And like, I, I didn't want to venture off. I think that's probably why I didn't. And we, I mean, we, we thought you were doing that anyways. You might as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. When we went to the, the Monte Norton Carlo. Would wake up, Norton wouldn't wake up until the sun went behind the favelas. <laughs> and it was felt like Nosferatu. With fucking jorts on and an Aussie shirt. <laughs> was I getting up late? Was I waking up late? Dude, you wouldn't. We were waking up at like nine. Me and Keith were working out. We were about playing tennis with Jason Steinberg. But I remember me and Patrice went to the beach and Patrice just sat on the water and let the waves come up like a little kid. And fucking, uh, we had lunch. We went for rides. And you would be nowhere to be found every fucking day. And as soon as that sun went behind the favelas, yeah. the mountainside, no one would come out. What's up? I'm hungry. I'm yeah. <laughs> and we'd be Norton, like, where were you? Who's sleeping? Norton's not going to go to the beach. We think he's sand. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was not that good, boss. I mean, it, it was, was good. It wasn't, it wasn't that good. It, it of, all good. The, of all the things I could be, sand. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, Lena, look it. Yo, what's up, everybody? Brand new sponsor. Love these people over here at Honey. We all shop online, right? 
Yeah, you always do. And we've all been taunted by the promo code at the end. If you just had a promo code, you could say 5, 10, 15, sometimes even 20%. But it's not there. You got to go searching for it and try and blah, blah. Honey takes care of all of that. Okay. Manual searching for cute. Coupons is a thing of the past. Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Like that. Bam. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. They range from sites that have tech, gaming products, to popular fashion, even food delivery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down. Whap. All you have to do is click apply coupon. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for a coupon. It can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you just watch the price drop right in front of your eyes. Honey has found, it's it's amazing, all right? I used it. I, I was on a site. I was buying headphones. Whap, bing, bang, boom, ping. 15% off my pair of headphones. Just like that. It drops down, finds a coupon. I save money. I love it. Okay. Honey has found it's over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. So this, this little drop down has saved $2 billion for people who use it. Crazy, crazy. If you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and it stalls in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Get Honey free at joinhoney.com slash YKWD. That's joinhoney.com slash YKWD. Uh, Terrible. I'm gonna get a drink. You guys keep talking. I'm gonna grab a beverage. Yeah, from the from the piano. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice. That's a nice place. Yeah, he's got a. Norton's got a beautiful place. Uh, um. Yeah. I. 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 What. What. What do you remember? Well, you have any stories about Patrice that you remember? Who me? Yeah. Like, uh, what's your favorite Patrice story? Ah, oh, there's so many of them. There was one I really liked though. It. It, it was just so dumb. I was driving him back to Jersey City, and we get to a space. I go, I, let me go upstairs, go to the bathroom. And it's just so stupid. As we were walking from my car to his place, uh, I, I don't know if I went first, he went first, but I, I, I said, I don't have a fucking thing going on in my career. I don't have a manager, an agent. I have no prospects, nothing to look forward to. And then he said exactly the same thing. And we both just started cracking up and kept walking <laughs> like, <laughs> like, who did, you know what I mean? Cause we had, you know, we were still doing comedy, but no, there was nothing in our future, either one of us at the time. And we just started laughing. Our crazy. Friends. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so many. Uh, I, I, oh, no, here's, here's, here's a good one. Here's a good one. <laughs> Me and Patrice, we went to read together for uh, two leads of a sitcom for Marcy Phillips, who was a head of casting for NBC or a, I think it was NBC. Yeah, I uh, and we get in there. So Patrice uh, doesn't want to do it. So he doesn't take his face out of the copy. He doesn't want to be there. <laughs> and I can't act. So <laughs> we're, we're, I'm trying to read with him and Marcy's yelling at me and I go, he won't take his fucking face out of the copy. How can I connect with him? How can you I snitch? <laughs> well, she was yelling at me. I go, yell at him. Right. <laughs> and, and she threw both of us out and we're walking down the hall of NBC. <laughs> We're cracking up and we're walking down this long hall and there's like four executives behind us. And I farted real loud <laughs> and, and he fell on the ground <laughs> late laughing so hard that he fell to the ground. Oh. Just the dumbest little things made him fucking like laugh like that. You know, oh, when we were in front of Boston, remember Florentine used to, he, he showed us that thing. You'd walk up to somebody, go, what time is it? Yeah. And as they're looking, you keep walking. 
We were doing that in front of Boston, and uh, he's bawling on cars. <laughs> His laughter was so <laughs> contagious. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it's just, yeah. you know, or, or any time we were at Boston, there could be like eight people in a room. If you said something, he'd be in the back, and he would scream before he laughed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jeez. And it was just, you know, just so many. When we were at Caroline's, you know, me and him – he would, I would host a show. He would go on, kill. Then I go back and I start doing crowd work and I go to like someone in the audience, look at the size of your eyes. And he would scream in the back, Jesus, maybe he has like glaucoma or something. And everything I said, he would scream in the back and stick up for the guy. And it was so fucking, he, it was so funny. Just he was fun. He was fun to do show. He was fun to do that yeah. shit with. You yeah, know, he was- he loves fucking around. While I remember, I was on stage at the cellar. He would walk in. First of all, he'd stand in the hallway and literally just block the light. <laughs> so as soon as, as soon as you just you felt the light just go away, and you're like, oh god, he's watching me. <laughs> and he would stand there, and then his at, right at the end of every punchline, he'd just shake his head. <laughs> After every and it, I'm not kidding. I don't care. Who, it starts fucking with you. You start going, oh shit. And then I started changing my act on the fly to do something that he would like. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And then he would he would just, and then he'd walk through the room as slow as possible. Literally, everybody's like, oh, there's fucking Patrice in the middle of my set. And he would just stare at me and he'd sh- just shake his head and then go pee, come back, stop in the middle, look at me, shake his head, and then go back. And then and then he would stand in the hallway again. And then I'd tell a joke and get a laugh. He'd be like, good job. And then he'd fucking leave. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> oh, dear, he was having a fight with this comic outside Stand Up New York. Yeah. Uh, I forget the kids. Uh, he moved to LA. I swear to God, I can't. Greg Wilson. Greg Wilson. The, oh, Greg, the Wilson. Greg Wilson. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I like Greg. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he was would. fighting with him. He was <laughs> fighting with asshole. him. And then, like, Patrice just, this kid was losing his mind how Patrice was just tormenting him and beating him down. And then the kid crossed, walked down, crossed the street, and yelled out the N word to. Patrice and Patrice said, I knew he was going to do that. (laughs) (laughs) Patrice started laughing. (laughs) Patrice might even done a countdown. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, Patrice, uh, he, let's, let's be honest, guys. I love him. Yeah. But a lot of people didn't. Yeah. (laughs) That 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 motherfucker, we were in, in studio one day in ONA. And for he just beat me down. Uh, he he went after my Rolex, saying. Then he started trashing my. I had a Porsche, and he's calling me inconsiderate, saying my car stinks. I mean, he really beat me down. I left there furious. So <laughs> I, I was out of my mind. So this is, I was out of my mind. I was so mad. Two days later, I looked up the price of my car new versus his car, and I sent him all the. You know, the difference is how my car was better than his S, whatever he had. And I sent a text to him. He calls me laughing. (laughs) You're still thinking about this? (laughs) (laughs) Like, he would just tear you to pieces, fuck you up. And then, like, it was nothing. He'd forget about it. Like, you're driving with resentment and anger. That, you know, he called me selfish for having a Porsche. Yet he was driving like an Escalade that ate up more gas and 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 whatever. And he would never get easy pass, by the way, that fucking piece of I remember going in the city with him <laughs> furious. I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> what, what what the fuck are we in this line for? And he just thought he was a casual pimp who didn't need to be clocked by the government. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was so angry at him. <laughs> I fucking hated that too. I hate he was the worst driver I've ever sat in a car with. Worse than Collins. Drove- Colin, Colin's a hunk of shit behind the wheel. 
Colin stinks behind the wheel. He's yeah. dumb, but that's because he's his age and yeah. his fingers are too thin. <laughs> Patrice. <laughs> <laughs> he has, Colin holds the wheel like this. He can't get his little <laughs> fingers. <laughs> Yeah, he has to tie little, one of his little fingers around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Patrice would drive so fucking slow. Yep. It's so fun. And he would stop at every piece of ass on every corner to just, and he'd pull up and he'd just be like, it was assault. It was fucking assault. He'd Ow. just be like, yeah, roll down the window. Yo, what's up? Let me, let me, you got a nice bum. What are you doing? Let me, lick, let me lick your coochie. Let me get you. I'm like, what are you fucking? But here's the thing. They would laugh. He was charming. If I did yeah. it. Yeah. If I did it, I'd be fucking arrested. If he did it, he lit. Look at those little <laughs> fingers, boy. Um. Yeah. Oh, the fucking little hand. Yeah. Look at that wrist. Just goes into the hand. There's no separation yeah. of hand and wrist. Um. Yeah, he could say shit that nobody could fucking say. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Oh, uh, there's so many funny times. Uh. You know, just standing out in front of Boston till four in the morning, smashing each other. People yelling their heads out the window. Get, you know, they're trying to sleep. You know, fucking, they would throw ice on us. Yeah, it's fucking. Remember they would throw crazy. ice. We'd be in front of the just, cellar, and they would throw ice on us. Years later, I found out that was Ava, Manny's girlfriend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> would throw uh, ice on us. I remember. I remember. When uh, Tough Crowd, though, if you look back at Tough Crowd episodes, Patrice was the meanest person <laughs> in the fucking world. He would be so mean to fucking comics from L.A. Oh. Or if it, I mean, he was mean to us. Yeah. But he was so people would start talking and you you felt the joke. It was just they were just trying to say the joke they wrote. Yeah. And it okay. wasn't conversation they were just trying and call be like what do you think of that well you know the and he would just be like Ugh, uh. <laughs> he, he, he really uh pushed on my rara the wrong way on that show uh Oof. oh man Ron but came we, into the cellar after one of those shows and he goes that fucking cocksucker fuck him fuck him i hope he dies fuck <laughs> oh, him <geez>. patrice <laughs> But Patrice came right after me. He's like, ah, is Guinea still mad? <laughs> I know. He, doesn't, he just, he's in the moment. And then once it's over, he just moves on to the next victim. Didn't, um, what, oh God, Jeff, uh, oh my God, how he's uh, from fucking, uh, Jeff Garland. Garland. Uh, was he, was it, wasn't he addicted to Jeff Garland on the show too? I, I think he was, uh, he made shit. He said something. He's like, you're on an improv show. Like he was really rude to him. And, and, and I think he felt bad uh, about it. Afterwards, he felt bad. Years later, he felt really shitty about a lot well, of that stuff. I, me and him, I mean, went after that fan. And uh, like three years ago, I felt so bad. I emailed that fan on Facebook, you know, just because he's, he's one of the greatest. Now. When you guys attack that fan on Tough Crowd. It was one of the fucking greatest things ever. But he attacked. I mean, I remember he yes, fucking he, Sue Costello was trying to get jokes out, and he was just telling her to shut up. I mean, I mean, it's it's wild. It's a, fucking wild what he did to other comics on fucking television. Being friends with him though was like being married to an abusive drunk. Like you always have to explain it to other people. Like no, you don't understand. He's not always like that. He's. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, that's it. That's exactly it. Being a yeah. friend of Patrice, why are we fucking commemorating it? Why are we doing a documentary? He was literally mean to all of us. Dude, he would have done literally for any of us. He would have done one benefit. Yes. Complained about his fucking spot in the lineup. Not stuck around for the picture and it left. That would have been the entire ahead. thing. And went too long. Yep. Do you remember? Uh, he was like. Do you remember uh, Foresight in the movie Steven Seagal, where he just went around killing people? What? Do, do you remember Foresight in the I movie don't know. Steven Seagal? Seagal? <laughs> Steven Seagal movie. The fuck, I, don't, I know, but you said the movie Steven Seagal. What are you talking that, about? <laughs> John well, Foresight, the first the actor? Oh, no, no, the other Jim, one. Jim, get a fucking a, a water cup. Stop drinking like a. Stop drinking like a f fucking... Yeah. A yeah, transitioning asshole on it, 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 it's infuriating. I understand that. <laughs> it, 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 it is very, very upsetting. Surprise you don't angry. have surprise you don't have a chandelier on that piano. Uh, 
Come on, that wasn't that bad. You know, it was worse than that bad. It was terrible. It's a background, a fans, a, a chandelier joke. You boob on a fucking Zoom background. Oh, that's a Zoom background. I thought that was your place. No, no, I that's moved. That is this house. is my New York place. I, I live in this giant mansion with a piano. <laughs> My and, a, place. and a string of Pelopines. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, me and Patrice were walking. <laughs> we were walking from the cellar one night. Yeah, that guy, William Forsyth. Yeah, ah, he was like that. Just he could, at any moment just take you out and then have a regular day. But we were walking from the cellar, so we went downstairs of Boston to that bar. Me and Patrice just and. Ben Bailey and DC Benny were down there just minding their business. And we went down there and just smashed them and beat them to pieces. They really think they won against us, like, because they're delusional. But they were minding their own business. And we just walked in like two bullies and <laughs> fucking attacked. That's all we did was attack. Well, he did. Because can I say why, though? You, you, we, it was, look, at, he was mean. We're all mean. I would say he's one of the meanest yes, out of Keith. all of us. Him, well, him Keith and Keith. Too. Yeah, but Keith. here's what Keith, Keith's laugh doesn't even make you feel good. Keith is worse because at least when Patrice laughed, it made you happy. Yeah. Keith, <laughs> Keith's laugh is toxic. Ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, Bob's fat. Ah. Wait, hey, Bobby, tell him what Keith did before you uh, shot your stream. Uh, I did. A, I did the pay per view thing. You know, I mean, look, oh. it, it, it makes me sad that I'm not fucking, you know, Burke Kreischer. I can't make a million dollars in a night. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm fucking, I don't even know how much I made. That's how little money I made. But he calls me up that day. And I'm like, I haven't talk. talked I haven't talked to him in like a week. I'm like, oh, shit. I go, hey, what's up, Keith? He goes, ah, I hope you bomb on your live stream. <laughs> and he hangs up. <laughs> the last time I've talked to him. <laughs> and, then, and then when he first started talking, Keith, he called Bobby up and he said, what did he say? He goes, You're fat. And he goes, I'm just working on my speech. <laughs> oh, no. He would call me up when he got his stroke. And he would go, he didn't get his stroke. Fat. He didn't audition for it when he got his stroke. <laughs> yeah. When he booked his stroke. <laughs> when he had his stroke. When Amazon when his... delivered it. Well, let's be honest. He got funnier when he had a stroke. Listen, I uh, he called me up. He's going, I pick up the phone. He's going, Bob, a fat fuck. Bob is a fat fuck. Bob is a fat fuck. I'm like, what the fuck is this? He goes, I'm in speech therapy. And the lady told me to pick a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and you just hear the lady in the background laughing. She's like, Bob is a fat fuck. <laughs> but I, I like Patrice was mean. I don't know. Keith. Can, I, can I explain something to you? What Keith would do, and if and you, it was very subtle, he would whisper in Patrice's ear. <laughs> So someone would come down or someone would be walking up and he'd be like, ah, look at Eddie F's shirt. Yeah. And he would set Patrice off. He would set him down that road. Ah, look at Eddie's dumb shirt. And then he would get into it and then he would keep him going. He would keep him going until somebody cried. <laughs> and a lot of times when did you Eddie if fucking left, never oh, came back. Yeah. Well, he, Eddie came in all arrogant and he said to me, how much do you make at colleges? And I'm like, what? I, I barely do them. <laughs> and it, Patrice's eyes lit up when Eddie came in bragging about doing colleges. And I'm telling you, no one even said anything for 45 minutes. I called Norton driving home. We're both driving to Jersey. And I go, we couldn't stop laughing. Do you remember that? Yeah. No one said anything because it was just fun to watch. Like there was the, the staff was gathered. It was a really weird. <laughs> it was like just, it was like pounding Bill Burr for doing a gig on a bus. Oh. It was like one of those moments where it's just so much fun that other people are just enjoying the be the beating. <laughs> hey. I think that I well, I think I was one who came in. I was like Billy because I think I was living with Bill. At the time. I turned that gig down. That's why he got it. I, I turned that gig down. Oh, and he came, and he came in. I go. Billy, Billy's, Billy's doing a gig on a bus to get to get playoff tickets. 
No, <laughs> Yankees series. Diamondbacks. Yeah, Yankees Diamondbacks. Yeah, World okay. Series, right? And when and, uh, he pretended oh. he was walking off the bus, he goes, "You guys were great," and he walked like yeah. he's walking down. <laughs> do you remember, do you remember when I mean, you had a pull? You had a pull, your next comic, <laughs> ding. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, Billy was sweating. Sweat was he was sitting at the bar with the bar. Because we were laughing the whole. Listen, we used to laugh so hard the restaurant would get the whole restaurant would kind of clear out because yeah. we would take over the restaurant. When, when like we, other people were there eating, and they were like, "What the fuck is happening?" Because it was grown men just screaming, <laughs> laughing at the end, and this one guy just sweating. Ah, oh, Bill canceled the gig. He didn't do it. Sweat, we beat when, him out of money. Oh, did he not do the gig? <clears throat> no. When. Listen, when we went after Matt Arisa's haircut, he wanted to fight us. Uh, uh, he wanted old box cutter lips. Uh, he fucking, <laughs> was, Jesus Christ. And then we used to go, I don't know how to start it, but like after we leave the cellar, we would go play basketball yeah. down in the projects. And, but yeah. then he's like, comic strip acts would come walking into the cellar with like a basketball and Patrice would look at him and go, what the fuck are you doing? You know, cause they weren't part of the crew that was playing. They just wanted to go play ball. Who was playing? I remember going, I never played, it was, but it was, it, was, it was all, it was, it, uh, here's how it went. We would do the spots. They would get over around one o'clock, two o'clock. And then we go to the projects, uh, Sherrod, Voss, Matt me, Voss. um, what? Matt Frost played. Matt Frost. Oh, Matt, right, yeah. Uh, Lewis Schaefer. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Uh, we'd all go down. Wasn't and play Kevin ball. a better player than people thought? Oh, he was great. Because he's such a twerp for people. Like, he's going to suck, but he was actually really good. It was good. He was awesome. And then we got you pom poms and a little mega horn. <laughs> I wouldn't play. <laughs> Remember that? We got your pop pops and a little mega horn. Because <laughs> you sat on the bench and you were our little yeah. cheerleader. <laughs> and then the night it all ended, this is when it all ended. We did that a bunch of times. And the night it all ended when the dude, the black dudes from the projects came out and they wanted a ball. And we were like, ah, hey, we got to go. And no, but then they play play and they were actually cool. They, were, they actually, yeah. they knew everybody was now, a we actually left. Sherrod, that's wow. the night Sherrod slammed Matt Frost to the he ground. Right, yeah. Colin, Colin was a good ball player. Colin, Colin was a great, Colin was really yeah. good at ball, man. Yeah, Colin Patrice was, good. was good. Patrice was good. Little Kev yeah. was the best. Though. Yeah. He, he, yeah. He, he, well, uh, remember, Norton, we used to have that building at 520 43rd Street, and right. they had a half court basketball inside. That's and right. we would all go in and play there. I never worked out there though. I, I first tried ever working out. I first tried in that building. I remember, they, had a steam, they had a steam room. They had to shut down in that building because guys kept sucking each other off in the middle of the night. Just they would go down really? there. Yeah. Oh yeah. They had a they had a, a, a whole. They had an outdoor. They had an outdoor terrace that was awesome. That's where we had do, my my wife's birthday. That's and right. Remember you, I took all the pictures. <laughs> Oh, I got to find those. This fucking asshole took the <laughs> camera away from me. It was all Don's friends and Norton. Yeah. Okay. Cause he lived in the building and he's part of, you know, we love Norton. Right. So, but he takes my camera. He just goes out. Hi, I'm the official photographer of the party. And he would snap a photo, but like up in their face. So we looked at the photos. It was just eyes and noses. <laughs> he didn't put it down. His- it wasn't, it was really bad. He didn't put he just- down his pants to take pictures. Like I that? think he did. I think there was one. No, not I don't think at Dawn's party I would have done that. I, I think I, I just would, took pictures of their, their their feet and hands, really just awful photos. <laughs> well, they I, they, I, they they had a steam room in there, and they wound up shutting it down because guys in the uh, in the building would just go in there and just steam fake steam and just suck each other off. So there was uh, shut it down. I, I remember I used to depending on. Uh, uh, which guy was working the front desk? Whether or not I would have certain uh, young ladies meet me upstairs. Um, I don't know. We had what was his name? He was Teddy. Filipino. You know, Teddy. Teddy. Hello, hello, Robert. Hi, hello. Jim. Jim. Yeah, he was very nice. He was very sweet, always smiling. But he would. This door guy would fucking sh- literally just like this. Front door. One night, a woman from the building was being attacked out front. She he locked the front doors and called the cops. <laughs> She was trying to get in, and she couldn't get in because he locked the front door. Oh my god! Uh, 
<laughs> but Jim would uh, bring certain people in when Teddy was working because Teddy was always like this. And they would no, they would just come in and go up. And I the parking was under uh Imperial Park Carlos. Remember the the, the parking <laughs> The parking guy. <laughs> was that? Was that? that it was, was a parking guy. guy. Bobby and I, I was a parking guy. And then I had a camera in my car to go missing. And there was a picture of this girl's fat ass on it. And I was like, fuck, I got him so mad. Dude. And uh, and then that one guy got arrested for stealing out of that garage. Remember that guy? One of the uh, guys was a real dick. Uh, he used to call the parking. And Billy Park and Carlos speaking with me. And Billy Park and Carlos. Yeah. 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 15 minutes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that was the fucking days, man. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I remember that's when Patrice came over. He would come over the house. We used to play video games all the time. Remember that shit? Yeah, yeah. You, play, you were on the games. fifth floor. You were on the fifth floor, right? I was on the fifth floor. Then Patrice would come over. We play video games until like three, four in the morning. I remember I used to piss Dawn off, and uh, and then Patrice went to Europe. Remember, he wasn't making it. Here. Right. Yeah. He was not. He was just his whole career shit the bed here, and he just went to England. Yeah. And he somehow ignited his career again. He met they a girl loved there. him. Melanie. Was that? It was he Melanie. Met that girl there. Melanie. Yeah. yeah, Melanie. She was like fucking eight feet tall with freckles. She was and sexy the, though. And the other guy, remember, he used to bring that guy around the tall. Ga Gavin. Gavin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, England. but he would always. He would always. I love Gavin, but. He'd be at Patrice's house all the time, and Patrice would be like, "Yo, man, you got to take Gavin." And you'd be like, "What?" He goes, "Gavin's coming over today," and then you put him on the phone. Hello, Bobby. I'm gonna be over your house in a little bit. All right, China, yeah. mate. all right, mate. And you'd be like, "All right." Yeah, he came over my house one time because Patrice was like, I, "I need a break," and he came over, spent the day, and then I was like, "All right, dude, I gotta go get a little nap before my show." And he goes, "All right, mate. I'll wake you up. I'll wake you up in an hour or so." I'm like. All right, like I, <laughs> he wasn't leaving, but he was too big to fucking tell yeah. to beat it. So I was like, I just went in the other room and took a nap with Dawn while he played video games in yeah. the other room. Then Dawn made dinner. She made a a fucking pork roast this big. We had four slices, two for me, two for her. He ate the rest of it. <laughs> Do you, I remember uh, going uh, to? I was in Amsterdam with Patrice a couple of times, but we we're in Amsterdam. Oh, and we would go to the red light district and Lisa Laminelli said, can I go? And he, he made her cry, but he apologized to her years. Why did he make her cry? He said, you're not coming with us. But the way he just got into it, you know, just, she, he just beat her down. Yeah. At times but, he would express himself in a less than pleasant way. But he, when she yeah. was doing radio towards the end, he, he was in making, Florida. he was making amends to a lot of people. Yep. Uh, he made amends to her. Uh, so there was a comic I was in Amsterdam with. So he went into the red light district and I, I just sat and had coffee. So he's with this prostitute in the window. And when he's done, him and the prostitute were smoking pot. And the prostitute said to him, what do you do? And he said, I'm a comic. And she said, do you know Patrice? <laughs> <laughs> I, swear to well, God. Dude, I was with Patrice the first time we ever went to Amsterdam. Me oh. and Keith and Patrice went the first time. <laughs> and I remember Keith, I got there first. I was at the Ibis Hotel, a little tiny hotel. Then Keith got in. Keith literally was like, where's the horse? And he didn't put his bags in the room. He'd be like, yeah, take my bags. Where's the horse? <laughs> And we went right to the red light district. We went to the local one. It was during the yeah. day. It was like three or something in the afternoon. And we went and it was, it was, they were like kind of ugly, <laughs> but we didn't care. My chick had like fucking acne. It was, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't care. I remember she had like zits on her chest. It was, disgusting. Oh. but we didn't care. We were like, fuck it. We're in Amsterdam. We come out as soon as we were done. We're like, all right, that's it. I'm done. I got it out of my system. Let's go back to the hotel. We walked three feet, saw another one. We were like, ah, one more. And we went back in, got <laughs> two more. And we found out later that we were in the local one. And that night we went to the regular one. Patrice got in and he, let me tell you something. He went in, he went in. I mean, dude, it was so crazy. The red light district in Amsterdam yeah. is so fucking nuts. It's, 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 um, it looks like Christmas. It's like where Santa lives. Yeah. It's all lit up. The canals. 
and all these women in these windows. Like your window and you're like, shopping. I, I yeah. can't fucking, I can just go have sex with that girl. And, and they're like waving you over. And then I remember Patrice, he would go into one place and literally less than 10 minutes later, come out. I'd be like, how was it? I didn't come. Why? She wasn't the one. And he'd walk around and go to another one. Come out. That wasn't it. Come out, go to another one. She wasn't it. He was going in and taste testing these chicks' vaginas. <laughs> Tell him. He was he was fucking them for like a couple minutes, going, nah, this ain't it. And leave. And I remember we were, like, we were getting annoyed with him. Finally, he went with this older Dutch woman. <laughs> And he was in there for like 15 minutes and he finally comes out. He was like, <laughs> and Bobby. you saw the lady, the old lady fucking stuck her head out the window and turned her side fucking closed and just went back in. They were both sweating. Uh, like they just fought each other. Tell them the story about the pants when you were. Oh in God. <laughs> that I, I actually, I still feel fucked up about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I never been out of the country for a show. And I mean, here I am with Patrice. I did my first road gig with Patrice in Philly for Dave and Busters. We drove from Boston to Philly. I mean, the first time I ever did that. You know what I mean? And uh, wait, Dave and Busters, the uh, the, the, the food the, place that like that weird like restaurant that, that's got like basketball and shit in it. Exactly. Oh, so we, we did. We did Dave and Busters. They have a theater in there. They have like a little tiny theater and they had like a comedy club. So me, Vinny Favorito and Patrice drove to Philly and did this room. And it was the first time we we're on the road. And that I got this tattoo. Um, I remember I got this fucking my first tattoo. Him and Vinny and Patrice were like, yeah, let's get tattoos. And I picked mine off the wall and I'm in the chair. And I'm like, guys, you get your tattoos. They're like, we're not getting a tattoo. You fucking idiot. <laughs> what was your time? Tattoo- what to say? Uh, I'll show you at the end of the show. I'll show you the tattoo at okay. the end. We're doing an extra 10 at the end yeah. for Patreon members. I will show my tattoo at the end of the show. Okay. But I don't want to fucking hear it. Okay. <laughs> I was muscled into getting this fucking tattoo. And uh, then we went to a massage parlor. Oh. And I remember we walked up the, we went up to the, this. is my first time at a massage parlor. We walk up the stairs and a uh, little Chinese lady opens the door. She goes, she sees me, Vinny. And then Patrice is behind us and she goes closed. She shuts the door in our face. And we're like, what the fuck are you talking about? It, this place is open until, you know, three in the morning. Right. So we, we knock on the door again. She goes, no, closed, closed. And then Vinny looks back at Patrice. He goes, Patrice, you mind stepping outside for a sec? <laughs> and he was like, you racist motherfuckers. And he left. And as soon as he left, come on in quick, 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 quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god they, they didn't want to fucking give Patrice a rub down Because he was 400 He was like 6 something They didn't fucking have enough hands <laughs> Right <laughs> So we I remember that we got massaged But we went to Amsterdam <laughs> I remember I When I went the night before I left I, We were doing these theaters And it was so you know, I wanted to get a nice outfit for Friday and Saturday night. And this is when, um, you know, like, um, you know, slacks, black slacks, you know, you get black slacks and those, those, uh, black, the, the polyester shirts were in, you know, the button down yeah. polyester yeah. shirts. Sure. 1976. Like little- yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. You had them, you've done them. Right. Yeah. So anyways, I went to this little place on eighth Ave, uh, and I bought, uh, pants, black pants and a black shirt all blacked out. I thought it was going to be great. So we get to the hotel. Uh, They check us into a boutique hotel, artist hotel. Then we go to the room. It's a fucking square. It looks like a prison cell. There's two metal bunk beds. There's a drain in the middle of the room. The bathroom doesn't have a shower. It just has a toilet and a drain in the, where the shower thing is. And there's a window this big that opens up into an alley where all the whores are. So if you open the window, Guys would be peeking their heads in, thinking that it's a whore. Like they could see it. <laughs> so Patrice and Keith are like, this is bullshit. I remember Patrice was just lying on this bunk bed. It couldn't even fit on this thing. And he was just like, we got to get out of here, man. We got to get out of here. And Keith is like, this is, we had a folding table, like a card table from the 50s. That was our table with metal chairs. Keith calls the guy up. 
fucking this is bullshit. We need a hotel. And the guy was like, well, this is hotel is uh, our outside in the country. You will not be near red like this. Uh, it's, it's nice, but it's a little far away. And uh, I was such an ass kisser. I'm like, I'm fine here. I'm just going to stay here. They're like, you fucking phony piece of shit. You're coming with us. I'm like, no, I'm going to stay here. I'm fine here. This hotel is fine for me. It was a shithole. So <laughs> they took him out to the hotel in the countries. It was 15 minutes away. The guy lied. It was right outside the city. It was on this beautiful land. They had two floors. They had a fucking baby grand piano on the first floor. <laughs> they had a pond in the back with fucking swans. They had an upstairs and it was the most insane hotel like house fucking they were having a blast so they come back and pick me up i put my outfit on <laughs> i didn't i <laughs> this is a room where you had to leave your key with the guy at the front desk <laughs> it's like one of those serial killer hotels <laughs> you had to leave your key with the guy but i fucking forgot that i didn't realize that i bought bell bottoms <laughs> So when I stepped outside into the Amsterdam sunlight, it looked like I was wearing an evening gown. <laughs> it, just, it went from here black all the way down and then swooped out at my feet. <laughs> you couldn't see my my shoes. <laughs> That's <laughs> and you didn't hear you. Didn't, the windows were up, and the van pulled up with Patrice and Keith in it. And the guy Franz, who hated us, didn't laugh at us one second since we've been there because we were such cunts. Patrice was just throwing their money, going "fuck yeah, gloopa gleepins." He was throwing it. He was throwing their change on the ground. Yeah, clapping gloopins, stinky fucking get a quarter. <laughs> he hated us. All of a sudden, the van pulls up. I'm out front. I'm so scared of what I look like. I know that I look like I'm going to an award ceremony as a woman. <laughs> and the van pulls up and Patrice and Keith, you know, all you hear is this. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, Keith literally disappeared from sight because he fell. <laughs> he fell on the floor laughing. <laughs> Just trying to roll the window down. Go, Bobby, you wearing it? What are you wearing? They made fun of me. They were you, smashed were you embarrassed? me. Buddy, I almost I'm gonna be serious. I almost cried. The, I had to do I had to do two shows that night and I was wearing an evening gown. <laughs> I was so sad inside I had no option. Like we I couldn't go back and change. I rolled the dice thinking that maybe it's not that bad. I as soon as they pulled up, they were they were smashing me so bad. They were like, Bobby got raped. <laughs> Bobby, a pimp grabbed Bobby and made him suck and fuck all night. And that's, <laughs> that was the outfit they made you wear. It was so bad that the guy Franz was laughing so hard he had to pull the van over on the side of the road because they were killing me. And I was just looking out the window like this. <laughs> And I swear to God, I almost teared up. Wait, that the worst. Wait, sometimes you try to just 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 yeah. wait it out. Like they'll get yeah. tired, they'll punch themselves out, and then just sometimes it wouldn't happen. Yeah. You just yeah. oh. you can't fight back. You can't fight back because you just can't fight back. Pound. You just got to take it. You know, you got to take it. And 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 I've I've been in many situations where it was hurting so bad inside. I mean, physically. Like hurting, like, oh, God, please stop. And they would not stop. Because if you said something that made Keith laugh or Keith made Patrice laugh, it was like getting punched. It was like getting punched. It was like getting beaten up. They beat the fuck out of me. And then I had to go on stage. Oh, oh you could hear them. I was on stage and they were laughing off stage. You could hear them just going, I wear the dress. Uh, and it was so fucking mean to me. So mean to me. It was so. No. Anyways, um, I walked into the cellar one night and I had like a little fever sore on my lip and they all started banging on the table yelling, Voss has herpes. The whole <laughs> cellar, Kevin, Patrice, Keith, I think Norton, they're just banging, 
yelling boss has herpes. And if Keith is the one who starts it. He started it, not Patrice. <laughs> fucking stupid. Keith is the Keith. one who starts it all. He <laughs> yeah. starts it all. And he steps back in the cut and he lets us attack. And then we're the assholes. And that's why all these, I can't believe how many people like Keith Robinson. <laughs> Nobody should. Well, it's funny because once in a while, a guy who doesn't know him will get mad at Keith and think they're going to figure out a way to upset him. And it's like, you're never going to win because oh. it, he, he's Teflon because he doesn't give a shit. So oh. somebody would come at him and go, you know, that's fucked up. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's all you get back out of him. Oh, it's just so fucking ah. funny. Um, so anyways, all right, well, I'm gonna we're gonna wrap this up a little bit. I did want to talk yeah. about something. We do an extra 10 minutes. Uh Norton, of course, has got Jim and Sam on Sirius Satellite Radios, the morning show. I mean, yeah. now that whole station is fucking stacked. You, Bennington, the bonfire. Um, when are those guys I mean, going there? I think in March. Oh, is it March? Okay, yeah. Cause I've I've heard that they had agreed, but I haven't heard anything from the, the company. So in March, I guess. Are they going back to the time at seven o'clock? They're going where, um, what's his name? Ellis was. Where the fuck was Ellis? He was at. He was, be he was before. Um, he was before. Um, Bennington? Uh, Bennington. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be you guys, them, and then I believe Bennington, which is, I mean, that's crazy. That's fucking great. Yeah, yeah. And then you got the Covino and Rich guys. I don't really know them too well. Um, there you go. Uh, and this, uh, Rich Voss, of course. Uh, my wife hates me. I, I I fucking love the podcast, dude. I really Thank do. You. Have you ever listened to it, Norton? I uh, have uh, with him and Bonnie. Yeah, I have. I've been on it once, and I've heard clips of it. But uh, they're great together. Yeah. So funny. The fucking yeah. disdain you have for each other is <laughs> it matches the disdain Beautiful. everyone else has for you. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Gabby. Uh, what's up, Gabby? Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> Gabby is Brian. Gabby, Gabby, I mean these. This episode, I feel bad. Gabby, it's just us fucking yammering. I love it. I love to hear the old stories, yeah. and I mean old, old yeah. stories. Oh, go um, yeah. fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I want to talk about are the extra ten. I guess we we just spent an hour talking about how it was, and a lot of comics, uh, and I hear it a lot now. The table's dead. Uh, that that style, that comedy is dead. That generation's over. We're finished. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah. We're going to talk about that in the extra 10. They're all Mike right. <laughs> we are done. <laughs> <laughs> Mike V. Suarez. Mike, you have a podcast with Greg Stone. What is that? Mr. Ridiculous. We're talking about uh, comic book movies, stuff like that. It'll be fun. Hey, thanks for doing it out of the car. The poor kid's in the car yeah. because in the house is fucking dead. So he jumped in his car <laughs> okay. to run the show. He's hope you have the heat on, kid. Um uh, I want to thank the ladybugs, but you know what? If you're a ladybug, stick around because we're doing some more time with these two fuckheads. And uh, and uh, and uh, join. You can become one of these ladybugs too. You can become a Patreon member, Patreon.com/slash Robert Kelly. All things me are up here. YKWD. You always get it first and unedited, and the extra ten only goes to Patreon. Uh, Calter and Kelly. That is Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. Oh, and Friday show is only on Patreon. And then Saturday night, the jerk off party, the Jo party. Where we let all you guys who are Patreon members come in, hang out, and uh, talk to us, and have a good night, and uh, have some laughs. And uh, sometimes I scream at you. But uh, it's fantastic. Uh, you guys, I want to thank all the, the uh, ladybugs that are doing it now. We have to read the names, Mush? You I don't have them, right? Here. No, I have them. Do you have right them? You, we can right do them next week if you don't have them. Oh, they got them right here. Oh, guys, uh, if you can help me with this, I read the names of the Patreon members, the new ones. You ready for this? Okay. One sec. There we go. And here we go. One, two, and three. And three. And we've been <laughs> like, mushed. I, I got to make them big. I'm sorry. <laughs> one, two, and go. Um, <laughs> one, two, and here you go, Jim. <laughs> oh, now. Oh, all right. One, two, and there, there it is. Go. Thank you very much. Right now. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I, I, did a I did another COVID test today. What did it say? Negative. All right, here we go. Oh, we only got two? No, we got three. I was going to say. All right, scroll up. Here we go. Hey, Voss, on the $10 ones, you guys want to read some? $10 ones, you have to do something 
uh, extra, like, you know, a 10 gun salute for the $10, or you can say something 10 times or whatever you want to do. So Jim, you want to go first? Um, okay. Who, who's the first guy? <laughs> A uh, Grant Scruggs? Uh, yeah. Cool. What do you got, Jim? Okay. Um, leave this Patreon and go to chips. 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 You piece of garbage. <laughs> All right. Well, let's try another one, Jim. And maybe what's the next one? Oh, uh, Michael Brennan. Yes, Michael Brennan. That's a ten dollar one. Maybe we try something different this time. Uh, I okay. hate your brother. I hate your brother. <laughs> I hate your brother. <laughs> I'm straight plus one. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Hickerson I want to thank you for becoming a member Jessica Lubinsky Thanks for becoming a member Jim we got one more here $10 one What do you got? James uh, Heatherman Yeah uh, Is that is that the guy? Yeah that's him Okay Patreon.com slash Chip Chipperson 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 All right, that. Okay, let's just That was only eight Patreon.com slash Chip Chipperson That's nine Patreon.com slash Chip Chipperson That's Mush, don't die <laughs> All right, let's try this one more time. Let's, uh, Jimmy, one more time, read this one and then maybe come up with something a little different on the things. All right, ready? Here we go. Okay, for um, for who? Derek, you're going to read his name right underneath that. No, no, no. no. Right on there. Chesty, Chesty. Right oh, Chesty Red Nuts. <laughs> yes. How many go. times do I, have to, I know, do I, how many times do I have to say it? <laughs> Ten. Cameo.com slash Chip Chipperson. Cameo.com slash Chip Chipperson. Cameo.com slash Chip Chipperson. Cameo.com slash Chip Chipperson. Cameo.com slash Jim Norton. Cameo.com slash Jim Norton. Cameo.com slash Jim Norton. Cameo.com slash Edgar Mellencamp. Cameo.com slash Edgar Mellencamp. Okay, I'm going to Derek Johnson. Thank you for being Mara. Nicholas Ford. Thank you for being Mara. I love your cars. And we have one more we could do. Jim, would you do the last one? Maybe we'll come up with something a little different, you know, than what we've been doing. Maybe something oh, for Jose Padilla. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Peckers, 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 peckers. Cameo.com slash Chip Chipperson. Robert Kelly live for all my dates. I'm picked up in March. I'll be in Aruba next week. This week, I'll be in Aruba. Come on down. And then in April, go to all my dates. Mohegan Sun. I'm going to be in uh, Utah. The Wise Guys, uh, Uncle Vinny's all over the place. So make sure you check out robertkellylive.com and become a member at patreon.com slash Robert Kelly. We'll see you next week. We're going into the extra 10. So you, ladybugs, don't go anywhere. Patreon members, stay right there. You know what, dude? We'll see you next week. listening to the YKWD podcast. Thanks for listening. Now go back to your shitty jobs. Shitty jobs.